Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas for the IBM World of Watson, World with Watson, as Ginny Rami was saying, because they're sharing Watson with the world. It's all about cognition, cog, cognitive computing, whatever you want to call it, artificial intelligence. Of course, we are theCUBE. We are bringing you AI right here in the data. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Nancy Pierce, Vice President of Marketing with the Cognitive Business Unit at IBM. Welcome back, great to see you. Great to see you too, hi. Last year we were talking cognition and cognation and cognitive, <laughs> whatever, you know, cognition, I think that's more of a sports analogy, Patriots I Nation, think so. cognition. Anyway, you're one year in the job. Yes. Give us the update, it's been a smashing year, a lot of changes, momentum, the energy's like, off, it's crazy. Well, I mean, I, I bet you can see just from being at this event and being broadcasting from this event that it's dramatically different than what we were able to do last year. Not only taking insight and moving it into World of Watson, but even from a World of Watson perspective, that was much smaller and more compact, right, as an, as an emerging space. So what a difference a year makes. Um, last year when I was talking to you, we were doing some of the basics. Nancy, what is cognitive? So, you know, doing the 101, I think yep. that's what I focused on. But I would tell you, today, we've gone from defining it to delivering it, and delivering it with a lot more clients. It's real. It's real. And that's the effect you get from being here at World of Watson. You walk around into the transforming industry space, and what do you see? You see Medtronic, you see 1-800-Flowers, you see the Ali uh, self-driving bus. Um, all of those are our cognitive examples leveraging Watson. Yeah. And we've got a lot more. And there's also a new dynamic going on, not, not because it's a production year, uh, it's just more of IBM's things are it's coming together as a company, is that it's not just technology intersecting with business value, which is not boring, it's great if you're into the enterprise business, business value, outcomes. We've been hearing right. that all, every single conference. So intersection with, with technology and business value, that's what used to be, but now you have social change. Now a new dimension that's kind of in this mission, we heard it from Ginny Romney, change the world, we're on a journey, you have a different vibe going on. That's what's different in the cognitive space because it becomes, really, it's not just about technology. It's about fundamentally changing people's behavior, um, engaging with people very differently, understanding them much more personally, and that personalization creates a level of trust and understanding and learning. So you're really engaging, I think, a different At an individual side, level. At an individual level. It's not at just a personal the industry level. you're in anymore. Right. It's like you as a person. Exactly. Your profession, your job. Right. Career. We're, we're impacting professions, we're transforming industries, and we're starting to talk about the specific outcomes. But we start with also, too, with cognitive, the art of the possible. And that's what gets people engaged kind of on both sides of their brain. What can we do with this? Um, and it's a really important discussion. Uh, what kinds of problems are you wanting to solve with cognitive? And half the time, they don't know how to answer that because they're trying to understand and absorb it themselves. What are the, what are the headwinds when you go into a client? Because there really isn't any competition for cognitive. I mean, you know, Ginny said today we don't have a, a search legacy. Okay, yeah, Google's got some cognitive and Facebook, you know, it's, it's your data. Okay, that's fine, but they're not selling really directly into the enterprise. So it's not like, oh, I can, it's IBM versus vendor B, C, or D. It's, is, it, is it that they just don't know how to apply it? They haven't thought about their business as a cognitive business? I wonder if you could talk about that and how sure. you're addressing that challenge. So well, I'd say, I would say a couple of things. First of all, a year ago when Ginny made this announcement this month that we were driving towards this cognitive error uh, and becoming a cognitive business solutions company and we were obviously on a journey for a cloud platform company. We did not have as much noise in the market from all the other vendors. Once we declared, we now see there's a lot of noise out there. And whether people are talking about consumer-oriented, quote-unquote, cognitive um, devices, I'll call them, mm -hmm. they're out there. And they are confusing the individual and, and buyers and clients on, well, you know, what's the difference between Siri and Watson? 
those types of discussions. And oh, you have wow. Alexa, you have Amelia, you have Holmes, you have Watson. And even when the industry talks about it, they put all those things together. And we are significantly different in the problems we're solving, the way we're applying cognitive and augmented intelligence, and we're helping clients move from being digital businesses, which that we're still, they're still working on, to infusing their digital business with intelligence, and it's digital business plus digital intelligence is what cognitive business is. We're talking about it on a different level and from a different approach. But I will tell you that there's a lot of discussion in the market and that didn't exist a year ago. Well, that's right, you, you lay down the gauntlet <laughs> and everybody says, yeah. oh, well, we, we, wait till you see ours, we're going to have that too. But so examples are obviously a key way to yes. show you know, proof points and, and demonstrate your differentiation. So you rattled off a few. Can we, can we drill yeah, into some of Yeah, let's talk about a couple of them. Yeah. Um, so we have a big space here on transforming industries and I'll just give you um, a couple of examples. So one is Medtronic. Um, you know, in the news and with 60 Minutes recently, and, we, and I think we've started um, leveraging cognitive and medical even you know, a year ago. But in the particular case of Medtronic, we have a great example there where they um, are leveraging Watson to really identify the right patients for their type one diabetes application. And so we have storytelling. We have three patients. They told their stories about how their application, IBM Watson with Medtronic, fundamentally changed their life from a life and death situation to being able to manage the disease. Because the majority of care for diabetes happens between doctor's visits. It's not something that occurs while you're in the doctor's office you're, and you want to prevent going into a, a critical situation. So it, these are life-changing and, and human assistance type, type applications and we're going to be seeing more and more of them. The announcement that we made with Medtronic recently was their Sugar IQ application. And that actually is for type two diabetes, which is a huge population, not only in the United States, but a growing population in India as well. So the influence that this application has with Watson on the world at large is significant. It's going to teach people through personal care with their application and their device, it's going to teach people how to fundamentally change their life and the way they feel and, the, and their energy and you know, um, prevent chronic illnesses that are a byproduct of diabetes. So you mentioned that's, that, go ahead, sorry. So that's pretty significant. So you mentioned that 60 Minutes spot with Charlie Rose and John Kelly, like. Stole did a phenomenal show. job. I mean, they're going to come out of the woodworks now. Uh, you know that after you, right? I mean, that was, that was a huge win for you guys from a PR perspective. And so when I say they're going to come out of the woods, you, when you said that when Ginny announced last year, you started to hear a lot of noise, now it's going to be holy cow. How did you guys like pull that off? I mean, you must have been so excited to see that come to fruition on a <laughs> Sunday evening right after the <laughs> football games. I mean. Well, I mean, it, the team you know, has a really strong plan to take the progress that we're making and really get it out into the market. I mean, and especially a year into declaring this as our strategic direction, you know, that was an important, critical interview to have. And it gives us a platform now to springboard off of that and talk about all the other great clients that we have and how we can apply what we're doing there in other industries. And that's what's really important. It takes it mainstream. So what have you learned? Um, Ginny mentioned a you know, study that you guys did. Yes. Uh, maybe we could explore that a little bit more. What have you learned in the last you know, 12 months, 18 months? of adoption. Right, so we get asked all the time, what are other clients doing? You know, talk to us about the cognitive journey. We have the six steps of becoming a cognitive business um, in the, you know, the consulting space and the transforming industries on the show floor. And um, we really want to help clients to understand what are the important things that they have to either have in place and also then to explore and ideate about the opportunities, the art of the possible. So, to get more insight, we went to 700 clients and partners, and again, large, small, individual businesses, uh, startup type businesses, and, and we did a study. And we learned that, um, so again, they're already on their cognitive journey, so we're exploring specifically the, the, the issues, the outcomes, and what we're finding is that 62% of the participants were pleasantly surprised with the outcomes that they received, and those outcomes really exceeded the expectations that they have. Again, this is a journey, and we're at the beginning of a journey, so people expect certain things, but with cognitive, the fantastic thing is, 
it really does enable you to look at whatever problem you're looking to solve so fundamentally differently, it's surprising. And that it feeds itself. And that's how you're able to get more of the business focused on moving to more of these types of projects many, and applications. How, how many people thought cloud was relevant? Because I think cloud is the engine. I mean, the weather company it's, is powering the cloud. I mean, I'm blown away by how good their cloud is. You can't really do cognitive without cloud, right? So you have to have um, a cloud environment in place, a strong cloud platform. A lot of the applications we're talking about are, have so been built on Lumix. So majority all like one cloud. All yeah. cloud, 100%? Yeah. Explain why. Explain why, I mean, it's, maybe it's obvious, but explain why you can't do cognitive without cloud. Well, if you're on the application building side, um, you access the APIs, Watson APIs, through either Watson Developer Cloud or Bluemix. IBM Bluemix, that's how you get no, access. You can, you can be, it's, it is a SaaS cloud for them. The customer can be on-prem. Well, yeah. I think he's saying, are you, are you saying? Well, but so, you, you're, you, so, that, so that's, that's if you're building an app. But yeah. if you're looking to put a cognitive system in place, Watson is only available through the cloud. Right, so. So you can't, and, you, and, and, and I, I you can't was, build a cognitive system yeah. without and I cloud. leveraging and cloud. And I thought that yeah. was you because can't crunch the kind of. Actually, I just checked, nine out of 10 said cloud computing, data analytics, mobile security will play an important role in cognitive definition within, yes. two, within two years. It's, it's, uh, so I thought you were going to say because you're constantly updating the. Consuming lots of data, right. information. And, and, and so there's no advanced. way you could do that in a distributed, non I mean, it just wouldn't work. It would, Right. You'd either be missing all the new function, I mean, it would just be a nightmare, so okay. Well, that's uh, what prevented people from, that's why we see the acceleration starting, because before cloud, you really couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't go into that space. You didn't, you didn't have the right foundation to being able to um, consume that much information and data that quickly. It would have taken a long time, and, it, and that's why people didn't do it. All right, so what's the go-to-market right now for you guys? Because obviously this show is like a bounce. You're going to get a big bounce of, of, of attention. We saw the numbers on social have been fantastic. Just the conversation buzz has been, yeah. I mean, obviously Watson's Watson, and people who know Jeopardy know he beat Jeopardy, he or she beat Jeopardy. It was a Watson that was uh, in an academic setting. Jill Watson, was mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Um, was a TA for, a class I didn't even know, and actually no one complained. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of really great and surprising I mean, examples. This is an interesting year for you guys, so what's, what do you do next? I mean, I mean, what's the game plan? Just continue to educate? Developers are going to be a focus, what's the? Developers are a huge focus, so we're continue to build out the APIs and the, the cognitive technologies that we have. Um, definitely working hard, the whole development community. Uh, we have a huge developer event early November. I don't know if anybody. November 9th? Yeah, November 9th. The world 9th. of Watson? In right. San Francisco. Yeah, we just found out yes. about it. We're trying to get there. Yeah. CubeCon is going on the 8th. I'm going to try to get back to the 9th. We're that would be to, great. We're trying to get the Cube there. So I saw uh, Meg Swanson. We're like, hey, come on. Get, oh, you got it. Forget the Cube. Come on, get the Cube there. We'll be there. Good. We'll be there either way. We hope the Cube will be there. Yeah. That'd be, that's fantastic. So, and that's just pure developer. That though. is pure that's developers. Not marketing. Again, this is our business event. Yeah. This is our technology and line of business event, and that's the developer community. And, and, and so we continue to talk to clients, and you know, so we have you know strong sales teams, consultancy workshops. Again, we're tr for some people, we're talking about the art of the possible, and with others, they're coming to us with ideas and they want help with where they get started. Um, the clients that I met with um, a couple of weeks ago at one of the big vendor um, events, um, you know, with everything from universities um, to judges in, in, in a state, I won't mention which state it is, we're trying to use cognitive uh -oh. to really understand how to even determine which type of cases should be tried and which case, types of cases shouldn't be based on Watson leveraging uh, sounds all like the Watson, Sounds like an ethical issue. The ethics is big. We had Shannon on earlier. Well, Ginny mentioned something today about how cognitive will help actually drive greater, you know, more fairness. And I do really believe that's true after talking to the judges because the way things work today, there's so much opportunity for error and human error mm -hmm. in what happens in terms of, you know, if you have criminal cases, that I really do think cognitive can um, really help us make a much fairer process, whether it's jury selection and doing that more fairly, 
could be applied in many ways. There's definitely that side of the coin where it increases transparency. And exactly. then the flip side is some people could and misuse it. And confidence level it. based on data. So right. that, the great thing about Watson is it gives you options um, of com you know, confidence against you know, actions or insight. So, so we heard some other examples through the either CUBE interviews or just around the show. So Geico, when, Jenny was talking about Geico when it presents offers, that's Watson's powering that. Right, uh, Scheffler, we had this chief digital officer of Scheffler on, mm -hmm. basically instrumenting all these components in, in automobiles, totally different use case. We had Staples on, the chief digital, digital officer of Staples. That's a retail e example, e-commerce example. And our, my favorite is Alpha Modus. Yes. Which, I mean, it's a small shop. Yes. You know, a few I'm guys very familiar with them, Trying right? to we understand cloud. the imbalances in supply and demand. So really dramatically different different use cases. Right, that's what I'm saying. Transforming industries. It's, it's wonderful, the, the array of different industries and client issues, um, buying agendas and use cases are phenomenal. And what's your priority this year? I've got the event on the 9th. What other marketing activities you got going on? Other events that you're going to be at? Besides yeah. the big tent events here at IBM, any external events you're targeting? Well, I mean, we're targeting all of the first quarter events. A lot of, you know, him, Cybos, all, you know, all of the industry events because it's a really important line As of business a having conversation. Having a presence there. Ha absolutely having a presence there. Um, and then, of course, you know, the IT events that we've done in the past. We're also um, exploring and experimenting with a lot of the art artificial intelligence type of events, as you can imagine. Yeah. And we have been doing that this year, but we'll probably do more of that next year as well. Um, so events are a big part of it, but you have um, full on demand obviously. generation campaigns. We had some great um, uh, seller breakfast today with a lot of clients, so for the client solutions team or the cognitive solutions team. So How's uh, your relationship going with the Bluemix team? It's of course fantastic. Of course, that's I where mean, the developer action is. That's where I started, I mean, that's, right? I started. That, that's where the action is, I can just go to Bluemix. Right. That's, that's where, that's the environment where you're going to get access to the APIs and all, the, all that you need to build a cognitive application. I was just tongue in cheek, I know it's going well. It's and of course a, Meg's a, a friend of mine, so. Yeah, Meg's <laughs> she's phenomenal, we love her. I saw her at the uh, analyst dinner that we didn't go to, but it's a different story. The, um, the thing is, is that to me the cloud is critical. I because, agree. But you don't want to get too bounded to it. You're decoupled right now, cognitive is here, cloud is over here. You can work with, they work together. I wouldn't say they're de decoupled at all. We happen to be different organizations within the well, company. Well, different organizations. I would say they're two sides of the same, you know, they're different sides of the same coin. But it's the at. massive component of your cloud differentiation strategy. It's huge. Watson. I yeah. can't go I, I, get. It's really difficult I heard 24,000 developers a day are coming on board. Is yeah, that, or is that a week? Or? And there's only one place to get it. Right. See, to me, there, you, ha you can't talk about cognitive without talking about cloud. But again, oftentimes you're entering the cognitive conversation through a biz business or societal um, type of a problem that you're trying to solve. And from a cloud perspective, you oftentimes have the conversation from a technology lens. But it's the combination of it's, these two things. That's a great point. It's the entry yeah. point. It's you the, get geeky with the cloud and you're talking business with cognitive. Exactly. Cognitive. I mean, when we're talking to the, you know, the judges, they're coming at it from their, I wouldn't yeah. call it line of business, but I mean, but they're coming at it from a, a different perspective than if we were just talking you know, to another that's, company where, that's and it's CIO. Point. They're deep both in their discipline. The same, both right? sides of the same coin. One technical, one business, well and said. The power of that together, I'm seeing in conversations to be just enlightening in terms of what people really want to do once they see the possibilities, which is why the examples are so important. Well, we're super excited to get our developers rocking with Watson. Yes. That actually had a ring to it, rocking with Watson. <laughs> we'll be rocking tonight at, with Watson. Um, and get on the developers. We just ported all of the IBM Go code to software layer, now Bluemix. So we're all, all on IBM Cloud on that product. And so, I'm excited about that, I, you know, the ID conversation I, we had. IBM ID. IBM ID. Integrated in, single awesome. sign on. Nancy Pearson, thanks so much. Final word. Share with the folks, what is this about, conference about this time? Give some color to it. If people aren't here, give a kind of, paint a picture. There's an energy here. And I think the way I would summarize it is, people are really getting the idea that we're at a really pivotal point. Tom Friedman mentioned it in his presentation. This is the beginning of a very exciting era. People can see the possibilities and the opportunity, but they have no idea where it's really going to take them but they know it's going to be incredibly different from where we are today. And it's this confluence of technology 
that's giving us this opportunity. So to me, I don't think there's been, and there'll be an exciting point in time exactly like this. Even though got, we've been through some very You know some some massive things, things are happening, but you don't really know, but you know you got to be ready. Right, you have to be ready and you have to also open your mind. Yeah. It's Nancy exciting. Pearson, Vice President of Marketing Cognitive Business, open your mind, be ready. A lot of good <laughs> stuff's happening, hopefully it'll be good. I mean, AI is good, good for people. This is theCUBE, we're certainly good for you with the content today. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more after this short break.